Buenas tardes con todos. Quería agradecerles nuevamente por acompañarnos en, nuestro, en este webinar 2022 de parte de nuestro grupo Groom, Groom Group. Hoy queremos, bueno, eh, retomar nuevamente lo que íbamos a hacer la semana pasada. Con los, con, hoy tendremos la participación de nuestro CEO Andrés Núñez, quien es, bueno, es nuestro CEO para el grupo Groom. Tenemos también a nuestro participante estelar, Sanjay Sabur, quien es el CEO para Afcatec desde Melbourne, Australia, y quien les habla, gerente comercial para PLS, para la compañía Prum Perú. Antes de partir, quiero explicarles dos detalles que son muy importantes. Eh, cualquier comunicación, pregunta que quieran, tenemos el chat grupal, que lo tienen hacia la parte inferior de la pantalla, y además, eh, dado que Sanjay Sabur habla en inglés, pueden en el, tienen un icono que se llama Interpretation, donde pueden hacer un clic y elegir en el idioma en que lo quieren escuchar. Lo pueden escuchar tanto en inglés como en español. Les voy a mostrar un breve diagrama cómo eh, hacen el, eh, la traducción. Como bien les muestro el video, hacen clic en Interpretation y ahí pueden elegir el idioma de conveniencia. Pueden elegir inglés o español. Es muy simple de de utilizar. Entonces, sin quitarles más tiempo, le doy el pase a Andrés Núñez, nuestro CEO para la compañía. Hola, hola, buenas tardes. Aquí estamos de nuevo, misma hora, mismo canal, pero ahora conectados y espero que me puedan escuchar. Eh, la verdad que a mí me dieron muy poco tiempo para hacer una presentación, así que apenas me la suban para poder empezar a hacerla y comentarles en qué estamos y qué se trata este webinar y por qué estamos como Brum hablando de esto. Eh, Brum Group eh, es un grupo es un grupo empresarial fundado en Chile en el año 20, es una empresa que tiene 101 años ya, muy enfocada en sus primeros años eh, al negocio naviero, eh, en el tema de, de, de agenciamiento de naves y socio de varias navieras que han estado, que hoy día siguen en el, en fuertes en el mundo, lo que nos hace tener una relación bastante importante con todos ellos. Y en los últimos 20 años nos hemos ido expandiendo a diferentes zonas, dado el concepto diferente que tenemos de, de tema más logístico y trazabilidad. Eh, ¿Qué nos caracteriza? La verdad que con 101 años tenemos bastante experiencia, tenemos... Una, una red de contactos y de conocimientos bastante amplia en el sector, especialmente en fruta, en forestales, eh, lo cual hemos ido desarrollando a nivel de eh, generar el valor agregado en la cadena logística para diferentes productos y en nichos y, y trade lanes o, o corredores específicos donde vemos que hay valor agregado. ¿no? Somos una solución logística integral en la cual tenemos como matriz Broom Logistics pero tenemos varias empresas, algunas de las cuales están en la zona de Perú-Chile, otras que están en Sudáfrica o en Colombia, y desarrollamos a través de estas empresas los diferentes servicios de la, de la, de la cadena logística. Hoy día, que le queremos presentar? Es la nueva empresa, una empresa que ya lleva un año y que nace como, como necesidad de, de agregar valor al producto que va dentro de un contenedor Riffer, eh, donde la, creemos que la cadena, la, el agregar valor a la cadena logística no es solo en términos de tener infraestructura de camiones o containers o la parte naviera, eh, así como hemos desarrollado frigoríficos, packings y también desarrollamos PLS, que es una empresa que busca eh, entregar eh, productos e inteligencia al manejo de la fruta, al handling de la fruta y al manejo de la fruta de la calidad dentro del contenedor y desde, al destino final. En ese sentido, nosotros tenemos un concepto en Broom Logistics que lo llamamos desde la tijera hasta el refrigerador, donde desde la cosecha tratamos de dar servicio, desde ahí empieza, empezamos a, a mirar cómo cuidar la fruta, su fruta, y entregarla de la mejor forma en, eh, en el destino final, ¿no? al cliente consumidor final. 
Nuestros servicios principalmente son todos los conocidos para la, la fruta, el, todo lo que es re, respecto al cold treatment, que es para algunas frutas y algunos mercados destinos requerida, la instalación de las cortinas, inspección en puertos, gasificado, estanqueidad, todo lo que conlleva la atmósfera controlada, que es lo que nos convoca ahora, eh, y todo lo que es conocimiento, siempre estar asesorando a los clientes en lo que es la la relación entre calidad de la fruta y la cadena logística, que muchas veces no se, la cadena logística se separa y no se habla de la calidad de lo que lleva el contenedor. Nosotros nos preocupa que la fruta, que es el producto que tenemos que mover, sea, sea siempre visto y siempre cuidado. Nuestro producto específico eh, que representa PLS es Maxten, que es un sistema atmósfera que que Patricia y San Jay van a explicar más, pero que es un, un sistema que llevaba muy, muy fiel y muy probado en el mercado, que se ha estado desarrollando en los últimos años con mejor tecnología. AppCache, que son sensores. Eh, Outflow, que es un producto que nosotros representamos, eh, que estamos tratando de que penetre el mercado. Y después tenemos PLS Advising, que es lo que le comentaba del tema de la calidad sobre la cadena logística y la calidad de la fruta en la cadena logística. Mercados que abarcamos, la verdad que estamos en, nosotros nos concentramos principalmente en origen en el hemisferio sur, por eso que estamos principalmente Colombia, Ecuador, Perú, Chile y Sudáfrica, donde son Perú, Chile y Sudáfrica son los mayores productores de fruta que va hacia el hemisferio norte, y eso es nuestra mayor fuerza y origen donde estamos desarrollando los corredores. Eh, donde operamos físicamente? En todas estas ubicaciones, inclusive... México y, y Holanda, porque en Holanda durante la pandemia pudimos comprar dos frigoríficos allá para darle servicio justamente a la, a la fruta que viene de los orígenes del hemisferio sur. Distribución, agencia aduana, control de calidad, repack, etc. en Holanda. Estos son donde estamos operando hoy día como PLS, que obviamente es donde estamos operando también en, como Brum. Eh, y donde se concentra la fruta fresca que va, va hacia el hemisferio norte. Nuestro compromiso, ofrecemos siempre calidad dentro del contenedor durante el transporte de sus productos perecibles. Esto es importante porque es, sabemos que entre mejor tratemos la fruta, mejor precio tiene y mejor retorno tiene para, para ustedes los exportadores. Tenemos que destacarnos por calidad y tenemos que tener una, una, una visión hacia la calidad del producto que transportamos. Y eso es lo que hace PLS. Nada más que decirles, tenía muy poco tiempo, Pati, fuiste bien mezquina con el tiempo para mí, así que, ¿qué quieres que te diga? Lo dejo con Sanjay Saur, que es nuestro experto en Melbourne. Un gusto tenerlo aquí a Sanjay, así que es nuestro experto y amigo allá en Melbourne. Te dejo, Pati. Gracias, Andrés. Bienvenido, Sanjay, por favor. Adelante. Hello everyone, this is Sanjay from Avka Tech in Melbourne. Um, sorry, I can't make it to Peru, though I used to travel before COVID times almost every year. Um, but hopefully I can come again. Um, Avka, Tech, Avka Tech owns the Maxin technology and we are responsible for it globally. Um, Maxstand was originally started by Mitsubishi uh, about 20 years ago. And I have been involved from the very beginning the technology. Uh, this business was transferred to Avcatech in March 2020. So you can say that the whole experience of Avcatech has been during COVID times. Yeah, despite COVID, um, Avcatech has managed to keep the operations of Maxpen without any interruption as before. Uh, here you can see how we have widen our operations together with our international partners. Uh, in Latin America, of course, Group Group uh, is our main partner here. 
Um, also, uh, via the company LCL, uh, large support in Europe, also South Africa. In South Africa, we also work with Southern African food terminals. Um, and in Kenya, with a company called GMS. Um, in USA, Japan, and Asia, our partner is Usen Logistics, which is a group company. Um, and in, um, from Australia, we manage operations in Australia and in New Zealand. Uh, Mexico, our partner is University Distribution. Uh, just a bit of history in Peru. We, uh, we started operations in 2005, the first time. We initially started with asparagus shipments, uh, mainly at that time between Peru and USA. And since that time, of course, we have more cargo. Avocado uh, started with little and then became a bigger volume, and then blueberry. So in this, until today, we can see uh, we have done more, almost 25 successfully. Um, one of the benefits uh, of this is we can provide the full range of control atmosphere sensors. The importance is when, especially during COVID times, when there are disruptions to the supply chain, it's important to find the right combination to get the best shelf life and storage. And we can provide the full range of CA set points because we provide independent control of oxygen. Among the CA systems, we have a unique position that we have a patent about the method to measure cargo respiration rate. So we have, over the last few years, we have a database of how the cargo behaves in different countries. different times of the year and season. Okay. And the benefit of measuring cargo respiration is that we can determine or we can see the maturity and how the and whether it has been fruitful. And we can understand why cargo behavior is different in different regions. Uh, here you will see the graph of typical ranking of avocado. Um, so when avocado is harvested, um, and for the first few days, the respiration rate is a little bit low. And once it starts ripening, Ripening, uh, when it starts ripening, the respiration rate increases very rapidly. So you can see this, this uh, safe handling of avocado is within the green zone before the ripening. So once it starts ripening, then it's very difficult to uh, do transportation during that time. And the benefit of CA is we can stretch the safe handling. So the ripening will happen later. So by lowering respiration rate, 
um, you can get more time to safely handle the food and your income. Uh, this shows typical graph here. You will see some fluctuations uh, in oxygen. But when you look at the respiration, which is the green triangle, you will see when the cargo was loaded in the container, uh, it was loaded with the respiration rate was around 10. And then under, under control atmosphere and CA, the respiration rate reduced. So the refluctuation did not have a significant in, impact until this time. But here, when there are bigger fluctuations, we can see the expiration rate. But again, after uh, the scene was established, the respiration rate is almost the same as the So when we first started with avocado 20 years ago, um, at that time we, we did studies in New Zealand to check the benefit of CA. We found that by using CA, the respiration rate of avocado is reduced by almost 70%. So in air um, at five degrees, um, you can see the respiration rate is around 30. Uh, on the CA, we reduced it to below nine. And since that time, of course, we have developed So we, are, we handle avocado in Peru, Chile, Mexico, USA, New Zealand, Australia, South Africa, and also Colombia now. When we first started um, in New Zealand and Peru, uh, we started with a set point of 5% oxygen, 5% CO2. Or 4% or 2-6% CO2. Recently in um, Latin America, we have been accepting set points of 12-8 or 8-12. Uh, and I will explain later uh, the reason. Um, but in Australia, New Zealand, uh, we are primarily using much lower set points. Uh, for example, 2% oxygen, 2% CO2, or 2% oxygen, 4% CO2. And I will explain the reasons for that as well. So this is what we found in um, New Zealand. Um, when we tested um, two different set points, uh, low oxygen, low CO2 versus the high CO2, um, we found that the uh, shelf life is slightly better when the CO2 is higher. But, um, but uh, unfortunately, it also causes um, a black spot on the fruit. Um, you can see that um, the black spotting on the fruit increased by 10 times. for a set point of 1010 10 or a 12 compared to 35. Um, this was because usually during the harvest, uh, it's very really wet and rainy in Australia and New Zealand. Usually we see rain during the harvest. 
And that's the reason why we do go for the low K2, low O2 set. This is the photo which shows uh, the black spot. Even in Mexico, USA, uh, customers tend to prefer, uh, also prefers the low oxygen, low CO2 set. However, in Latin America, we found quite a different situation. Um, so we conducted tests in Chile using, using INEA in Chile. In 2016, we compared and verified the points. So in this uh, so, uh, trial, we selected we selected avocado at three different times of the season, during the season, and and it, so the treatment was ten days at five degrees to simulate the time between harvest and the packing. Uh, and then 35 days in CA at five degrees. And then five days in air at five degrees uh, to simulate the distribution and destination. After that, we did a ripening test at 20 degrees to see how long the fruit needs to reach ready to eat. So the harvest was done at three times of the season. So first harvest, the first harvest had a dry matter of 22, roughly, and a fruit fruit is 55. The second harvest had dry matter 26 and a fruit firmness 63. And the third harvest had a dry matter of 31 and fruit firmness of 64. Um, and we had different treatments. So, first was a control in the air. CA1 and CA2 are at the same set point, 5% oxygen, 5% CO2. The difference between CA2 and CA1 is CA2 is the same, but no gas. So with, yeah, without gassing. CA3 is 12% oxygen, and 8% CO2. And the last treatment, CA4, we wanted to see what was the impact of very high CO2 on the other. Okay, so now I will show you the results. So these graphs show the result after 50 days. So this is 50 days. So five plus 35 plus 10. So you can see for the harvest one, uh, air firmness is low, but all other treatments are almost very similar. The same for harvest two, the, the Values are slightly lower than ours one, but all are very similar. And the same story with harvest three. Again, the uh, height is a bit lower, though the firmness values are lower, but all are very similar uh, in fruit. 
So you can see the impact, the early harvest fruit uh, as the season becomes longer and the um, dry matter changes, uh, the firmness uh, changes slightly. Um, it is the same for all CA symptoms. With the external color of the fruit, uh, here you can see the color gray. The normal air fruit had changed color a lot already. Um, the CA1, CA2, which is the low oxygen and CO2 component, they were still at stage one. Um, CA3 uh, had changed slightly um, and 20% were at stage two. Um, and it was similar when you look at harvest too, as well. Um, when it was ripened at ready to eat, uh, you can see almost similar uh, treatments. CA1, CA2, CA3. CA4 is a little bit worse because we're at level five. Um, in the uh, final harvest, that is harvest three, um, the CA1, CA2 are again slightly better. But when you ripen, uh, they are almost the same. Um, the stem rots um, almost negligible. Days. Um, slightly higher with CA3, uh, much more with CA2. So with the increase of CO2, you can see that the rots increase with CA3. With the body rots, um, uh, almost nothing. Uh, in the, uh, after delay. Um, but at ready to eat, uh, we have seen a little bit, but not so significant among the trees. Um, this is the browning or the skin color after harvest. You can see CA1, 2, and 3 are almost similar. CA4 has a little more. Remember, this is after 50 days. Um, at five days. For harvest 2, there is no difference. Or there is no difference. And also harvest three, there was no browning of them. So you, we can say with the dry matter increases. So when the dry matter increases, we don't see the effect of the external brown. Um, this is the internal uh, condition of the all the CA treatment have very similar result. Uh, and the same with harvest too, we are seeing a slight change in the CA treatment. And same at harvest three. But what we found is very interesting uh, when the right that for the ripening where we are looking at ready to eat at 20 degrees, uh, when you increase CO2 to 8% or higher, we get the fruit ripens three days slower. Uh, 
on average. So you can see CA1, CA2 is around 10 days and CA3 is about 13 days. And you can see the graph here, the proportion of the food which are ripening. So you can see how many ripen uh, over the number of days. You can see CA3, most of the food ripened later. So CO2 does seem to have an effect on uh, how slow the food ripens, especially in the And this is also harvest too, same story. So CA1, CA2 are around four days to five days. The CA3 is about eight days, three days more. And this graph also shows the proportion. So you can see CA3 happens later. Um, CA4, see, in the third harvest, they are almost the same. Uh, so for harvest one and harvest two, the CA2 made a bigger difference than in harvest. Um, so in, in terms of how max stand works, uh, we can achieve we can achieve any set point that we want using the same simple principle. So first of all, we do a leak test of the container to make sure that the container leakage is within our limitations. And then we install a controller and model. Um, to control, uh, to, uh, uh, this controller has a sensor and it can also. We also put, after the cargo is loaded, we put a curtain on the door. And if required, we have a method of removing CO2, if very low CO2. You can see the controller can, uh, has valves which it controls and it will allow fresh air to come in and then I to go out. And the controller by itself can also control CO2 for high CO2. So when you need CO2 of 8% or more, we don't need special CO2 control. But when you require low oxygen and low CO2, then we need special CO2 control methods. One more um, uh, change we did for during COVID times is we have increased the battery capacity of our controller. So, so the battery is now has more than double the life. To allow for uh, delay in your transit, etc. So the first method of CO two control is our traditional method. Um, so in our traditional method, we have a CO two and these covers are placed on top of the pallet during cargo. And um, so whenever scrubbers are required, um, Broom Group will inform customers how many of the scrubbers are required for each panel. But now we also have a new alternative. We have a system called GEM. That is a membrane for removal of CO2. 
and it uses uh, power from a reefer container. And therefore, it can work continuously without interruption um, whenever the reefer is out. Also, the membrane uses uh, uh, has a filter that also removes ethylene. Uh, this system has been approved by Carrier Transitcom, and uh, we have worked together with Carrier Transitcom. So, therefore, this is only available for Carrier Reefer. Um, in uh, this system can be retrofitted in a carrier in a carrier reefer and can be used um, so this shows how the gem system works um, the reefer container air comes through one side of the membrane and then the CO2 is removed from the other side. And the gem system is sits inside the USDA compartment. So it does not use the space inside. So inside you can see the membrane and a pump, and the pump to remove the CO2. After installation, we install a panel uh, and our controller is fitted as before, so no change to the control. The M system controls the CO2 in, in association with the max tension. So you can see um, different examples. Uh, in this case, uh, the long transit from Kayao to Hong Kong uh, with a 5-5 set point. In this case, the same graph, but showing the respiration rate of the graph. You can see the respiration rate is very low, uh, around three uh, in this case. This is an example from New Zealand uh, of a 2% set point. Yeah, you have a two oxygen, four CO2 set point also. Also here from Peru and uh, Colombia, we are using a 12 uh, set point. So, so far we have our maximum experience with the 12-8 set point from Peru has been 40 days. And, and from uh, Peru with the 5-5 five, five set point has been almost 50 days. Now I will give you a very quick overview of our operation. Uh, in Australia, of course, um, which is our home country, um, we offer services in the main port. Uh, it's, it's mainly stone fruit, mango, and melon. Uh, but this year we have started. This year we have started shipping avocado. Until now, Australia had a shortage of avocado, but this year we had a bumper crop, and we started exporting. New Zealand, um, we have North Island and South. Um, we handle stone fruit, uh, citrus, uh, apples, avocado. Also mixed cargo to the, uh, to the Pacific Islands. 
South Africa is avocado. And Kenya also avocado. Chile is avocado and blueberry with some stone as well. U.S. Um, currently, we have avocado is being shipped now. Uh, we have asparagus in the start of the year. Also recently, we have started shipping iceless broccoli. And we also do, every week, we have shipments for the U.S. military uh, when shipping targets from California to the the U.S. bases in Hawaii and Guam. Uh, Mexico, also we handle avocado. Of course, Peru is one of the most important markets in the world for seafood. Ecuador, um, banana mainly. Colombia is becoming a bigger and bigger volume. Every so the benefit of Maxtend, of course, is because we can we can hit Maxtend on any reefer. Is uh, we can react quickly uh, with short runs. It works with any type of reefer, um, so we can ship the mine. And we can act quickly. Only thing is, we need the reefer to pass our lead there. And we have our own support network. As I showed you, we have representatives at origin and also destination. And we also have our own network to recover our controllers. And as you know, we have been in the business for a very long time, more than 20 years. So we have a very long supply record of successful shipments. So I have come to the end of my presentation. If you need to interview, you can, of course, contact Patricia in Peru or and there's also information on our website. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I'll stop you. Thank you, Sanjay. Muchas gracias, Sanjay. Eh, bueno, ahora yo lo que voy a hacer es, para no quitarles más tiempo, voy a hacer un breve resumen de lo que es nuestro sistema de atmósfera controlada, pero mientras tanto los invito, por favor, que vayan formulando sus preguntas. Las preguntas las pueden hacer a través del chat que tienen abajo de la pantalla, y nosotros en virtud del tiempo responderemos sobre algunas preguntas ahora, aprovechar que tenemos a Sanjay presente, o si quieren hacer las preguntas a Andrés, o a quien habla. Eh, así que, por favor... Mándenos sus, sus preguntas. Eh, mientras tanto, mientras vamos recibiendo las preguntas, eh, yo les voy a hacer un resumen. ¿Qué es Maxent? Maxent es el sistema de atmósfera controlada que lo representamos desde, desde Brum. Desde Perú estoy quien le habla para atender todas las dudas, preguntas que tengan durante la temporada. También está Patiaba, los que ya lo conocen. Esos son todos los commodities con los que trabajamos. Es tenemos una amplísima gama de commodities, y así como Sanjay les explicó, nosotros tenemos una muy amplia gama de set points, set points muy bajos, desde un 2-2, 5-5, 12-8, 8-12, no quiere decir que solo trabajamos con esos set points, sino que también podemos customizar los set points, ¿ok? Es un sistema, como lo ven en pantalla, muy sencillo de instalar y de desinstalar en cualquier contenedor. 
eh, de cara hoy a la pandemia, al COVID, nosotros somos muy flexibles porque entendemos de que hay muchos problemas logísticos y al no ver contenedores nosotros estamos atendiendo los, eh, ¿qué, ¿Qué hacemos? Transformamos una caja regular a una caja de atmósfera controlada en tan solo minutos, ¿ok? Tenemos muchísima experiencia, así como Sanjay se los mencionó, tenemos gráficas también donde vamos controlando el comportamiento de la fruta dentro del contenedor, que es muy importante, este, teniendo sensores de CO2 y O2. Hacemos un trabajo muy meticuloso, de nuestra operatividad, o sea, desde que preparamos el contenedor hasta que se carga el contenedor con la fruta, hasta que este contenedor parte, le hacemos un monitoreo durante toda la travesía, incluso cuando llega a destino, ¿ok? El monitoreo se hace desde Australia 24-7. Entonces, eh, un poquito resumiendo, tenemos toda la disponibilidad para atenderlos esta temporada de palta, también para la de arándanos, mango, espárrago. Ahí en esa diapositiva ustedes después nos pueden hacer todas las dudas, preguntas, para ver qué set point va mejor con su fruta, dependiendo del destino, dependiendo la calidad de la fruta. Hay muchas variables que tenemos que analizar y para eso tenemos todo el soporte desde Australia. ¿Sí? Entonces... Les he hecho un resumen a modo veloz, después nosotros le vamos a mandar las presentaciones, la de Sanjay, tanto el resumen de quiénes somos, quién es Maxen, quién es ese sistema de atmósfera controlada. Y ahora pasamos a, creo, la parte más importante de preguntas y respuestas. Y después, por favor, no se vayan, porque así como les prometimos, tenemos un sorteo eh, de unos premios que están bien interesantes. Así que terminando la rueda de preguntas y respuestas, les mencionaremos los ganadores de los premios. ¿Ok? A ver, eh, primera pregunta para Sanjay. Nos hacen la consulta. ¿Qué tan importante es la condición del contenedor para un buen funcionamiento del sistema de atmósfera controlada? Um, that's a very good question. Um, the, the, the condition of the container is important, especially in the long transit or when you have many uh, transshipment situations. Um, the reason is that even if a container passes a leak test uh, on the ground, when it is moving on a, and loaded on a ship, um, It can, it can cause the container to, um, to stress or strain, and that can cause leakage. And it's, that's why it's very important that um, we get a container in good condition, which passes the leak test and also can maintain um, uh, the good condition during the voyage. Uh, this is the reason why we have a limitation. We say we, we prefer boxes less than five years old, if possible. Um, they will provide the best um, situation uh, in terms of performance. Gracias, Sanjay. Eh, segunda pregunta. Nos dicen, 2% de oxígeno es sumamente bajo. 10% de CO2 va a generar daño de la cáscara, pitting. Sorry, I didn't understand that question. Yes, eh, preguntan que hacen una un, la consulta o comentario. 2% de oxígeno es sumamente bajo. Y 10% de CO2 va a generar daño de la fruta. ¿Es correcto? Yes. <laughs> Uh, well, we have done a lot of shipment at 2%. And this set point was selected by the, uh, uh, the government department of horticulture in New Zealand uh, after a lot of testing. So with the 2% O2, we do not see any damage. We are doing shipments uh, every week from New Zealand uh, to Asia, um, Korea, to Singapore, to Thailand, to Malaysia. 
and um, we have done a two-two set point now for the last more than ten years uh, without a problem. So we don't believe the two percent oxygen is harmful unless the reefer is switched off or unplugged. Uh, if the reefer is unplugged uh, and there is no power, then um, yes, uh, low oxygen is not great because um, we want the reefer to be powered on. But we have not seen such problems uh, for shipments from New Zealand. Uh, with regard to the high CO2, I, yes, uh, as I showed in my presentation, CO2 does improve the shelf life, but it also can cause some skin color or browning on the fruit. So it's a matter of balance um, between the shelf life and the skin color. Um, the, the aim is to keep the best balance to get the best shelf life, but without damaging uh, the fruit. Ok, eh, otra pregunta. Nos hacen la consulta si es que hemos considerado hacer recomendaciones de atmósfera controlada de acuerdo al porcentaje de materia seca para la palta eh, versus días de viaje, travesía. Um, we can uh, change the set point to suit the fruit. Um, but it's now during COVID times, it's very hard to predict how long the fruit will stay on board um, during the vessel. We are seeing delays of almost two weeks sometimes, uh, especially from Australia and New Zealand, exports to Asia. Um, so it, it, it's a very interesting concept. Um, um, if we can predict the transit time, we can then predict the best set point we use. Ok, voy a juntar dos preguntas o dos comentarios en realidad en uno, donde dicen que 8% de CO2 y 12% de oxígeno, o 15% de oxígeno y 6% de CO2 es atmósfera modificada. Por otro lado nos comentan, cuando, 20, 21, cuando suman los valores entre 20 y 21% es atmósfera modificada. Y normalmente se deja que sea la fruta quien aporte el CO2. ¿Es el caso de Maxten? Quizás podemos aclarar la diferencia entre atmósfera controlada y atmósfera modificada, por favor. Okay, that's an interesting question, and I get asked this question many times. Um, the, the real difference is, uh, how does the atmosphere change if the temperature changes? Um, so, for example, uh, as you know, when the temperature changes, the respiration, route of, uh, the respiration rate of the fruit will also change. Um, if it's a modified atmosphere, that means you are not controlling, you're only just keeping it oxygen plus CO2 equal to 21, uh, without any sensor, um, then it's a modified atmosphere. So, for example, if you put a fruit in a bag, the oxygen and CO2 will change. Uh, if the temperature changes, the balance will change. Whereas if in a max tent container, because we have a sensor, um, even if the temperature changes or some fruit are not pre-cooled or some fruit are better conditioned than others, the sensor will automatically adjust to keep the set point where we want. So a controlled atmosphere can get, deliver a predictable set point for the full voyage. Uh, I believe that's the difference, that there is a control, it's active, and it's controlled continuously until the end of the voyage at the set point that you want. Gracias. Y una pregunta que es muy interesante, sobre todo en la actualidad, eh, que si hay alguna recomendación específica de set points para la palta para tiempos de tránsito largos, hablamos de más de 30, más de 38 días de tiempos de tránsito. Um, like I said during my presentation, so far we have experience of using 12-8 set point up to 40 days uh, and 5-5 set point up to 50 days. 
Um, of course, it's safer to go um, with the five five set point because in in my technical presentation, you can see the CO two does have an impact on the skin color of the fruit if the voyage gets delayed too long. But so far, up to forty days, we have not heard any such problem. Perfecto. No sé si tengan más preguntas adicionales, eh, siendo ya las seis de la tarde, tenemos que ir cerrando el evento. Eh, así que bueno, de todos modos, si es que tengan algo, todas las preguntas que se quedaron sin responder, nosotros las responderemos en el transcurso de hoy y mañana. Pueden seguir haciendo preguntas, dudas en el transcurso de la semana, de todos modos, a través del correo, o a través de redes sociales, como, como prefieran comunicarse. Ok, eh, gracias Sanjay, gracias a todos, voy a nombrar los ganadores de, de los premios. Como les comentamos, habían cinco piscos donde el primer ganador es Diels Arango, el segundo lo tengo grabado como Gap Stegi, luego Ronaldo Matos y Marjuri Ninel Stephanie Albán Panta y este, Y Rivera. De todos modos los queremos mencionar, pero después nosotros los vamos a contactar uno a uno. Y los dos premios importantes, que es un vale por consumo en el hornero para dos personas, todo incluido, la primera ganadora es Lucía Manrique, y la segunda ganadora, que creo que también es mujeres, dice Danae. Así es que nada, felicitaciones. Nosotros las vamos a estar contactando para hacerles llegar sus premios. Y agradecerles nuevamente por su tiempo, por volverse a conectar con nosotros. Y aquí estamos, estamos para apoyarlos durante toda la temporada de palta. Sé que muchos de ustedes no solo son palteros, también tienen mangos, arándanos, espárragos. Eh, estamos para trabajar con ustedes, tenemos todos los equipos, material disponible, nuestro personal operativo 24-7, como les comenté, todos tienen nuestros contactos, eh, Sanjay también, a pesar de que está al otro lado del mundo y a un diferente hor eh, uso horario, también está para apoyarnos en todas sus dudas que tengan, en cuanto a dudas más que nada técnicas. Y bueno, nosotros somos el equipo Broom, el equipo Maxent. Gracias nuevamente y esperamos vernos pronto en un segundo webinar.